Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing a short and small bookshelf tour because I'm just going to be showing you one bookshelf which is the bookshelf that is behind me now and I guess an overview of my classic collection. In our flat we have three big bookshelves and I guess two small bookshelves and also just books everywhere. If there's a space I will put a book on it and so will Ben to be fair. This bookshelf is my favourite bookshelf, I think because it has a theme because it is just classics Obviously there are classics in other places, but these are the ones that tend to be in series. For example, the you know the vintage red spine is really recognisable. So today I thought I would give you a quick tour of it and show you some of my favourite classics, my favourite editions of classics, and just show you some book porn. This is where I sit and film. At the very top of my bookshelves are actually some hardback fiction that kind of just doesn't fit anywhere else, so it's... Here. The second shelf is my Penguin edition, starting with the classic Penguins, moving on to the Penguin Modern Classics, and then the Penguin English Library editions, and a plant. For years I thought that Penguin Classics were a little bit ugly, mainly because it really depended, it was so dependent on what uh, picture or portrait they decided to use for the books. What's interesting online, especially on Instagram, I've seen a resurgence in these classics, especially with kind of the dark academia aesthetic. They still remain the classics that I have the least of, just because they tend to be a little bit more expensive. And I think for a long time they were just slightly less fashionable, um, but now, as I said, with dark academia, I kind of want to start collecting some more of them. The Longest Journey by Enforcer has always been on my TBR. Um, but I think it is actually my favourite that I own in terms of like how it looks. I think it looks so beautiful. Penguin Book of Witches. Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. Sketches by Boz by Charles Dickens. Felix Holt the Radical by George Eliot. The Longest Journey by E.M. Forster. A Passage to India also by E.M. Forster. A Sentimental Journey by Laurence Stern. Dracula by Bram Stoker. A Penguin classic of note for me has to be Lolita because this is actually one of my favourite novels but it is also I think one of the first ever Penguin Modern Classics I ever got. It actually feels like weirdly crinkly because I've read it so often. It's also just full of lots of annotations in pencil which is how I annotate. With the Penguin Modern Classics as well you also see the mint spine come in which I personally love and I've kind of decided to separate my um, Penguin Modern Classics with the mint and then Penguin Modern Classics with the white spines. In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. The Feminine Mystique by Betty Friedan. Monkey Grip by Helen Garner. The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall. We've Always Lived in the Castle by Shelley Jackson. This was actually a gift on my very last day as a bookseller. A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. A Spy in the House of Love by Anais Nin. Bonjour Trucesse by Francois Sagan. In terms of Penguin classic publications, I think you are all aware that my favourite is the Penguin English Library editions. Far From That in Crowd by Thomas Hardy is one of my all-time favourite novels. But this edition is also just one of my favourite book covers ever. This was also actually one of my very first, I think, Penguin English Library classics I ever bought. I just think this bee pattern is absolutely beautiful. Elizabeth and Her German Garden by Elizabeth von Arnim. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bonte. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is when I'm sad that I don't have all of my classics with me because Shirley, also by Charlotte Bronte, is one of my favourite novels and also has a beautiful cover. Anyway, Jane Eyre. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. There should also be Middlemarch on this shelf, but I'm currently reading Middlemarch, so imagine a Middlemarch gap round about here. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. A Room with Review by E.M. Forster. My Beloved Howard's End by E.M. Forster. Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. Please also imagine a gap for two of my favourite novels, which is North and South and Mary Barton. Both of them I have Penguin English Library editions of, and I think North and South is probably one of my all-time favourite classics, and I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> Fast the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. <laughs> Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. One of the Great Loves of My Life. Tessa Durville's by Thomas Hardy. 
Dubliners by James Joyce, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson, Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray, The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton, To the Lighthouse and Mrs. Diary by Virginia Woolf. The next shelf is my penguin classic shelf with a beautiful red spine and at the very end I have some Persephone books as well. Now we move on to Vintage Classics, who again are probably my favourite publishers of classics. But I'm going to start with this edition, which is one of the vintage Russian editions, because it's the only one I have, and it's also really beautiful. This is Dr. Zhivago, and the reason I bought this is because it's actually Ben's dad's favourite book of all time. And he isn't a huge reader, he reads a lot, but he doesn't necessarily read novels. But he really loves this novel, so I wanted to read it um, just because... I'm a bit of a suck up. My love affair with vintage classics started with a battered copy of Jane Eyre. I think when I was in year seven or year eight, I wanted to read Jane Eyre. And at the time to read at all, or to certainly to read any classics was really, really geeky. And so I didn't want to go in with the traditional Penguin classics book and look like a bit of a snob. I wanted something that could just blend in really easily. Vintage classics with their modern looks and interpretations of classics in the cover design meant that I could go into my class and be undetected as someone who was reading classics which would have been totally uncool. My love has continued and one of my all-time favourite books as you know and also one of my favourite covers is this beautiful vintage edition of Mrs Dalloway. I own lots of editions of Mrs Dalloway as you will see in this video but this edition is where the love affair started. At the time all of Virginia Woolf's books had this design but for me this was perfect with Mrs Dalloway because even though it's Virginia Woolf it was kind of like Mrs Dalloway's going into the wallpaper. This book has been completely battered, um, especially because I did my BA on it, and it has been annotated to an inch of its life. Um, but for me, I will never part with this book, and I'll probably be buried with it. Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown. Possession by A.S. Byatt. Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Bleak House by Charles Dickens. As I Lay Dying and the Sound of the Fury by William Faulkner. The Good Soldier by Ford Maddox Ford. Praise End by Ford Maddox Ford. The French Lieutenant's Woman and the Collector by John Fowles. The End of the Affair by Graham Greene. The World in the Evening by Christopher Isherwood, A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood, Two Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, Liza of Lambeth by W. Somerset Morn, Sweet Francaise by Arin Nemirovsky, Anna Karenina or Anna Karenina? <gasps> the Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, Mrs. Dalloway, Orlando and The Years by Virginia Woolf. One of my favourite novels that just breaks my heart every time, Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. Disturbing the Peace by Richard Yates. Therese Wakan by Emile Zola. Apologies for my pronunciation of all of these books. Now moving on to Persephone. Persephone Books is a publisher and a bookshop in London which is all about finding and republishing women writers from the 20th century. They also do publish some men writers but kind of they want to bring women out of the margins of that period in literature. My first Persephone book was a Writer's Diary by Virginia Woolf. Not only is the book just beautiful to read, but look at those end papers. What I like about Persephone is that they really incorporate the book into the end papers. Um, and this is obviously an illustration by Virginia Woolf's sister, Vanessa Bell. I have Young Anne by Dorothy Whipple, London War Notes by Molly Panter Downs, A Writer's Diary by Virginia Woolf, but edited by Leonard Woolf, Despised and Rejected by Rose Alatini, and The Wise Virgins by Leonard Wolf. Then moving on, we tend to have a, just a random collection of classics and classics that are slightly smaller than other editions. On this shelf we have Faber, Bloomsbury and then Farago. Some Oxford World classics and then moving on to more vintage classics and the vintage classic author series. Ending with some Melville House novella series, some old penguins and some Dubby H. Smith's vintage classics yellow bags and an aloe vera. Oscar and Lucinda by Peter Carey. The English Patient by Michael Ondaatje. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Noel by Susanna Clark. The Return of the Soldier by Rebecca West. Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. Jamaica Inn and My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. 
Oxford World Classics are kind of my go-to publisher for 18th century literature and I've recently been wanting to get back into reading 18th century writing and so I've picked up a couple of purchases. So these are quite new books uh, and this massive book is Cecilia by Francis Burney who is one of my favourite writers. A bit like the Penguin Classics sometimes, they can just look a little bit boring because of the pictures they choose but if they get the picture right, I think like they have done with Cecilia, they look really beautiful. And also with the white spine, they all line up perfectly. Cecilia by Frances Burney. Memoirs of a Woman of Pleasure, also known as Fanny Hill by John Cleland. Roxana and Mole Flanders by Daniel Defoe. Belinda by Mariah Edgeworth. Mel of the Wanderer by Charles Robert Matterin. Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. A sneaky vintage classic. This is the Vintage Voyage series and this is To the Lighthouse. I am obsessed with maps, so when I saw this I had to get it. But yes, To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Another kind of genre or edition of vintage classics I love are the different author series they do. So for example, the Virginia Woolf series that I think is probably the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Um, and yes, I did rebuy all of Virginia Woolf's books even though I did already own them. The same goes for Jane Austen. I just love each author's kind of set look and how beautifully they all look like lined up together and also the fact that they're a bit smaller, they feel quite chunky. And yet again, one thing I think classic book publishers do really, really well is beautiful end papers. I think these are called end papers. These are called flaps, I don't know. Uh, I don't work in production or editorial, I just work in marketing, so I don't really know what this means. <laughs> Iris Murdoch and The Sea, The Sea. The Jane Austen series. In no particular order, we have Pride and Prejudice, Persuasion, Northanger Abbey, Mansfield Park, Sense and Sensibility, and Emma, which I think is my favourite Jane Austen. In the Bronte collection, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, this is the only one I have in this edition, but I would really love to collect the other Bronte novels in these beautiful designs. Of course, I was going to get the Virginia Woolf novels, um, starting with The Waves, Mrs Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, the realisation that I've moved these around for videos and then just put them back, not in alphabetical order, is killing me, to The Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf, I probably don't need to say her name again, A Room of One's Own, and Orlando. In the Melville Art of Novella series, I have The Awakening and First Love. I also have a couple of the old Penguin classics. This is my favourite one, mainly because it's Lady Chatterley's lover, um, and it's the cover that we associate with it being banned and you know it being the most scandalous book and having to be kept in a paper bag. So I wanted this edition as kind of like a wink to that history uh, in terms of its publication. In the beautiful old orange penguin classic books I have The House in Paris by Elizabeth Bowen, Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence and The Waves by Virginia Woolf. These little bright books I think are actually one of my favourite types of classics. They're published by Vintage, but in collaboration with W.H. Smith's. It's basically a remake of the yellow back, which appeared in W.H. Smith's uh, in train stations across the country in the 19th century. I just love this kind of gothic look uh, that especially comes with the kind of very bright, almost neon yellow, uh, and the melodrama, and also these gothic sprayed edges. Look at that. Thing of Beauty. Starting with The Warden by Anthony Trollope. Hard Times by Charles Dickens. Tess of the Dub Fools by Thomas Hardy. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. And then finally, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is where I keep my hardback classics, including my folio editions, some penguins, um, a vintage edition of Mary Barton. And then we kind of move on to just general hardbacks and more non-fiction. The one type of book or classic that I do collect are folio editions. Um, my mum often buys me folio editions of my favourite books. Um, they have to be like my very top favourites just because I know I'm probably going to keep them until I die. This is a beautiful folio of A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf with the original uh, cover design by Vanessa Bell. My folio edition of Under Milk Wood by Dylan Thomas. My folio edition of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. The 2019 movie tie-in hardback of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Beloved or Beloved by Toni Morrison. My Virago edition of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald. As you will have noticed, I'm not too interested in getting hardback copies of classics. I do really love paperback in general, it's what I prefer to read. But I do get some hardbacks, as you've seen with the folios, and also with um, the Penguin English Library, no, the Penguin Clothbound editions, which are like the 
hardback editions, the cloth bound editions to the Penguin English Library paperbacks. I think this is my favourite one, this Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, again one of my favourite books, um, and this beautiful pomegranate design. The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James, Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rees, On Friendship by Michelle de Montagne, On Art and Life by John Ruskin, My Own Story by Emmeline Pankhurst, The World of Sex by Henry Miller, The Lady in the Looking Glass by Virginia Woolf. I also have this beautiful edition of Jane Eyre by Michael O'Mara Publications. It's the only book or classic I have published by them, but this was actually gifted to me uh, when me and Ben got engaged and it became my something blue for my friend Danny. Throughout the book she's included these little kind of notebooks and she's also highlighted all of the kind of quotes about love in blue. I almost forgot about this beautiful edition of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. HQ, which is a part of HarperCollins, published this when they published a book called Ill Will by Michael Stewart, um, which actually Michael Stewart just a forward to this book, and both books kind of went together in a beautiful combo, and they both had similar designs. And actually, I have to say, I mean, I love my folio edition, obviously my folio edition is something really special, but I think this might be my favourite cover design of all of my of all of my hardback classics. I just think it sums up the kind of look of the novel really well, the colours with the moors and Wuthering Heights. A 1903 edition of Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. I'm not a huge fan of collecting old books. I'm not one of those people who wants to get lots of old editions of books and kind of likes the fact that, oh, I've got a book from the 19th century. But when we were in York, um, I went into a vintage or an antique bookshop and saw this beautiful edition of Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. And because it's a book I did my MA on, I feel quite attached to it. It's not necessarily a book that I'll necessarily read again, but I kind of like the fact that I could have something like this and almost display it as kind of representative uh, for my like dissertation, I guess. So even though I'm not a collector and I don't necessarily want to own loads of old books, I do kind of like finding the little treasures that's hidden in them, especially if someone has annotated a book and I like to see what they've annotated and what I annotate and to kind of see what they wanted to get from the book in a way. This huge book is one of my most treasured possessions. It is a manuscript of Mrs. Dalloway. What is so beautiful is that you can see her notes, her marginalia, sometimes even a shopping list or doing some maths and <laughs> summing up her expenses. You can see where she's crossed things out and where her pen has run out so she's had to change colour. I just can't get over how beautiful and how much I love this book. I hope you just enjoyed sitting down and looking through my classic collections with me. It isn't until you're actually making a video like this that you realise how much you collect certain novels, aka Wuthering Heights, and how many editions I have of that novel. And even though all of this can seem very materialistic, and it can seem just talking about the editions of books, physical books are material objects, and they become a thing of sentimental value as much as they do the value that comes from the words inside. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again next time with another bookish video.